Hey, Ferret. Oh, man. We are alive, by the way. Yeah. Don't tell any secrets. I, uh, or, uh... I heard my own voice on your stream. Ah. How was your uh, day at work? Fine. Yeah. I'm just looking for it. I just had a good uh, sandwich from Subway, though. Ah, pretty fresh. It was pretty fresh. One of the freshest Subways I've, um, Subway sandwiches I've had. I'm glad. I'm put the music back on while we wait for this team. And if Subway's out there looking to sponsor... Oh yeah, if, hey. anyone, if anyone has a Subway franchise and wants to sponsor our stream, let me know. Eat fresh. Yeah. Well, I think something like that is going to have to go through corporate. Ah, they're all franchised. You know, who knows? Yeah, but can I don't think one franchise has that kind of power. It would piss off other people if we made them look bad. This is very true. What do you call the drink where it's like vodka or with Red Bull? It's a question for Ektar. Red Bull with vodka? Sounds like. Red Bull vodka. It's where there's a name for it. It's Red Bull and something. Literally just called vodka Red Bull. All right, there's something with Red Bull where, where you just call it something else. Red Bull and is it Fireball? No, Fireball is Fireball. With, uh, oh, somebody called this the. Oh, that's it, Jaeger Bomb. Oh yeah, that's Jaegermeister and uh, and and Red Bull. Somebody's mixing. Hold on, what is this? Because I like this name. Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey with Fireball whiskey and some Red Bull. Oh my God! Cinnamon whiskey and strawberry pucker. And they call this the Red Dead Redemption 2 bomb shot. Yeah, look at this. Red Dead Redemption 2.
Okay, looks like they are about there. Soon-ish. Okay, we are about to start. Um, today we've got Vendetta versus Spooky Bookie Boys. Um, a little bit of a technical delay, uh, not due to the fault of the teams. My Windows decided to do a system update uh, right before game time. So they have already played game one. Um, I'm getting the information from them right now about who won that. So I do apologize for that, but... Windows is a, uh, it's a beast. It doesn't work. Looks like Vendetta won game one. Uh, so it is 1 0. Let me update uh, that score there. And go back here. So I do apologize to the data team and to the spooky bookie boys but here we are and I'm sure everyone's already left the uh uh, left the game due to the uh, delay, but here we are. Um, so here we go in game two. It's Infernal Shrines. Uh, Spooky Bookie Boys has chosen first map pick. Uh, this is the draft choice for Vendetta. Um, Vendetta has a uh, pretty good record going into week eight. I believe they're sitting in the four or five seed. Um, but, uh, playing both these teams, uh, we know a little bit about them. Um, we have played them. We've had scouted them. Uh, I know that Geo is a really, really good healer on the Vendetta side. Uh, it doesn't look like he's playing tonight. Um, but looking at the Spooky Boogie Boys, they also have some pretty good players. And let's jump into this draft. Barrett, what do you remember playing these teams? Uh, Vendetta is on the left hand side, and Spooky Bookie Boys on the right. I remember the name Legacy. <laughs> you remember the name Legacy? Yeah, maybe Gel or something. I can remember that because I was thinking about how to pronounce it, but I really can't remember much. Yeah, we played Vendetta in week one. Um, oh, oh. So that's about two months ago. And yeah, I mean, I would have to see like what our draft was, and then I, it'll probably come to me. Uh, and we played Spooky Bookie Boys, I want to say, two or three weeks ago. But two two good teams. Uh, Nexus Division has strong players all around. So I'm excited to see kind of what happens here. Again, this is game two. I apologize for missing game one. Um, it's Vendetta 1-0. The best player is off the map with Sonya. You see a Hogger and a Deathwing Van, both heroes that Vendetta plays quite a bit in their drafts. And I'm expecting an Uther or perhaps a Medivh band, because I know that um, the Spooky Boys do play the, those heroes. And I'm wrong in both, both fronts. It's a Sugoth band. 
Ether is open. The deep is open. The light abandons no man. It is an ether draft. I played a win. <clears throat> yeah, I think we're gonna see a double healer probably. Yeah. You think they're gonna pair that up with Lily? I'm not too familiar with. Well, the the wait is over. The, um, the team is a little bit different from what I remember. Uh, I so I'm not exactly sure if Gel is the tank, um, but I I would like to see a Lucio come out right now. Lily makes sense with Cassia, but um, I think Lucio is just a strong healer. And if they pair Lucio with Uther, um, Oriel comes out. Hope. So it is double double healer comp here with the Haka in the off lane, giving some global macro pressure. Oriel's an interesting pick. You know what I want to see? What I I don't think we're gonna see it, but what I would really like to see is a resurrect coming out from the Oriel. Okay. So they, they would have... It would be fun. Yeah, level 20, they would have the revive if you went that, that old, plus the Resurrect Memorial. The Haka race car on with some nitrous boost. And if they go the... There goes the Volivan. The, the upgraded old. This is game two, blob blob. It is 1-0 Vendetta. Hey, remind me, Danny, which which team is on oh, which is side? Uh, Vendetta is on the left side, and the Spooky Boys is on the right. We will okay. forge a great destiny. Okay. All right. Varian comes out. Um, most likely a taunt Varian. Yeah, I believe it's a taunt Varian. They're going to run around with Lucio looking for Although picks, I, maybe. I, I believe when we played them, Lucmos was their tank. So maybe they're going to run something with a double bruiser tank combination with the hyper carry Cassia. Um, Victory for the Forsaken. So we see a Hanzo and a Sylvanas coming out from the Spooky Boys. And let's see what their last pick here is for the Vendetta side. Kel'thas. Okay. I, I haven't seen a Kel'thas in quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder what his pick rate is in the Nexus Division. I I don't... I, it's not zero, because I have seen Kel'thas has come out enough from other teams. Um, but yeah. I wonder what they're planning on doing with the Kel'thas. Are they looking to, to blow someone up? Well, it is a full shrine. It's good, it's good pressure on the point. Um, but here we go. Which draft do you like the most? I'm a fan of... Okay, you gotta remind me again. Vendetta uh, is on the left with, with Lucio Varian, Diva, Kael'thas, and Cassia. And the Spooky Boogie Boys are on the right uh, with Uther, Sylvanas, Oriel, the Hockett. And the okay, I like, this, I like the the Spooky spooky like Boys. The Sustain comp with uh, Hyper Carry Hanzo and Sylvanas. Yeah, I like so, Sylvanas is going to be a pretty big threat. Um, Hanzo is going to provide some good poke. And pressure around the shrines. Um, I, I mean, I, I imagine, and the Haka as well is going to be able to run around, maybe look for a flank. Mm -hmm. I imagine Uther is gonna, just going to look for a chance to walk up and stun somebody. It looks like Varian's going to have a tough time getting in there, unless he has support of the Lucio in, in the form of high five, maybe to make him unstoppable, cleanse him of any stuns. Yeah. Yeah, because Sylvanas, um, the Spooky Boys have an opportunity to go mind control with Sylvanas. Uh, they could silence the Varian. They can do a lot to this Varian, and he's the Diva's going to have to support Varian in that matter. Yeah, because Varian's going to have a tough time going, getting in there alone. Well, let's see how this draft goes, and I'm excited to see this uh, game two start off.
Prepare yourselves for battle. Here. I will introduce the left side of Vendetta. On Lucio, we have SCH. On D.Va, we have Zalgo Jack 01. On Lucio, we have Digo Zap. We have Lusmos on Kael'thas. And Legacy on Varian. Barry, you want to introduce us to the red team? Yeah, so the spooky boys. Um, they We have Sikari on Oriel. Gel or Gel on Uther. Mar on Sylvanas. Azura, Azura on Hanzo. And on Dehaka, we have Shire Fair. Hector is uh, informing us that Kael'thas has a 5.8% pick rate in Nexus Div. So, not the most picked. <clears throat> now, we already see D.Va in the top lane um, getting ready to get her soak ready. 5.8%. I wonder how that compares to Murky's pick rate. Uh, I believe it's double. Sylvan Sylvanas is already getting the rotations down bottom to catch that wave. Soak. And the Vendetta team is coming down to catch us. Now, obviously, Varian is not a real hero tool four, but still, he's going to do what he can to get, get these waves cleared. And it looks like they're going to have D.Va double soak for the time being. D.Va's going to catch that mid lane soak while the Haka stays top. Luther seems to be having trouble walking in. He's just getting poked. They're going to heal that up. But Uther doesn't have unlimited mana. Yep. Now, Uther did go the Q build for <clears throat> reduced healing or reduced mana cost on his Q. Uh, and it looks like Hanzo has chosen the simple geometry heal. Uther's low. Good boot by the Lucio. And first blood goes over to the Vendetta side. Oh, and Lucio gets away. He was able to run past the Haka, oh. but Kael'thas is going to... Kael'thas goes down. And Lucio they're going to get in trouble. <laughs> Two this kills a... on both ends. Legacy is low on Varian. Does the Haka get a tongue? Fight the fight. <clears throat> Diva gets out of mech. Yep. Was... And the Haka's going top to catch that wave so that soak top. Um, definitely an advantage going over to the Spooky Boys. And we're hearing from Ect Ektar. Is it Ektar or Ektar? Um, I call him amazing, but yes, Ektar. Ektar is informing us that Murky has zero games in the Nexus. And... This is a sad day. Well, for the next we will change it on Thursday. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to go for that 100% win rate. Teams are getting their soak, are catch, catching both their Merc waves for their uh, teach camps. Um, at what at what point do you want to take the Bruisers? Because typically, we're getting these Bruisers prepped right about now on this map. So they crash into the wave while the objective is up. But it doesn't look like... Um, Vendetta is going to prep, prep, prep their bruisers. I would like to see the Spooky Boys get their bruisers right away. Well, it's kind of too late now. If they start <clears throat> going for the bruisers now, they're going to let Vendetta um, get an advantage on the objective, and I think it would take them too long to take the bruisers. So they really have no choice now but to deal with this bottom camp pushing. Yeah. The siege. Now, Lexi does have taunt. Gel is stepping up a little bit. A little split from the team. And Dahaka is making his way to the objective. Pong goes out onto the Sylvanas. And that is a dead Sylvanas. Good follow-up from Kael'thas and Cassia. Looks like Spooky Boys are going to be pushed off. They're going to clear the wave. And Kael'thas gets pulled. Will that be enough? And it looks like it will. That is enough. 28 to 10 in objective. And I'm not Up sure if uh, the Spooky Bookie Boys are able to defend. Looks like they're not. They're giving this up. The Hawk has already gone top to catch a top wave soak. And the first objective is going over to the, to the Vendetta side. I just want to point out Lucio did go reverse amp, so we are going to see the Chad Lucio uh, running up and, you know, blasting that music front of their faces, in front of Spooky Boy's faces. Is there any other kind of Lucio, though? Sadly, yes. <laughs> Something you've been, I've been seeing um, lately is the boombox. Yeah. 
the boombox is a is a good talent. It's a free ward, it lasts indefinitely. Gives you grants you vision. That can be very useful. Let's see if this death uh this death cloud is gonna work for the uh the vendetta team. Looks like they catch Gal. And yeah, I can't imagine him getting uh, out for this that one. Was, that that went the way they wanted it to go. Uh, I believe that was what they call sick nasty. Uh, a I sick nasty it's catch. Calculated. That's what the kids call it. Now calculated is what you say when you get away with like one oh. HP. Now both teams are now starting their bruisers. Next objective is going to be top, and it will be a uh, mortar. Punisher. So Vendetta will be capturing their bruiser camp a little bit later than Spooky Boys. The Hawk comes in looking for a tongue onto Varian. He misses the tongue. So uh, Dahaka came all the way bot and he's going to miss some soap top and get the, let their bruisers get free cleared. Um, so big commitment that did not pay off for the spooky boots. Cassia is zoned out quite a bit. He's but able to stay away from Uther's yeah. stun range. Right in the stun center. Stun comes on the variant, but protected. And meanwhile, they're missing a ton of soak top with the bruisers pushing with, with the D.Va. Maybe some, and some minor macro decisions that just didn't work out taking those risks to get that uh, that pick on the variant, bottom lane. Now it is, both teams do have 10. Dahaka misses his tongue. Cassia takes a boop. But it looks like they're getting pushed back. It is 5v4 in this fight with uh, Sylvanas having to go talk to clear those waves. Looks like Vendetta's gonna go and clear this bottom, bottom wave. Yeah, and Spooky Boy is just sort of, uh, they've been they've slowly losing control of the game. They're just kind of playing catch up right now um, in terms of experience, and they're just responding to what Vendetta does. Vendetta's yep. pushing the lanes, taking the cams, and Spooky Boys have to respond to it. Looks like looks Spooky like Boys are, gonna go down. they're going to trade a top for a bottom for it. Um... Good damage on a D.Va, the neck pops out. Let's see if they can get this uh, fort before the team comes up. It doesn't look that way with the shrine up. Bark is calling for the spooky boys, uh, the weebest way to say it, to uh, make a comeback. I don't think that's weeb, that's pretty oo-woo though. Oh, is that oo-woo? Spoo-wookie boys. Spoo-wookie boys. And if okay. there's an adjective that describes that, I'm not sure what it is. Vendetta's looking for a taunt onto oh. Oriole. Comes out, Cassia pulls onto Sylvanas. Good damage coming out. Good mech coming out from the Vendetta team. And... I'm wondering if this Crystal Aegis oh. is going to come out. Uther does die. Sylvanas is low, Sylvanas goes down. Crystal Aegis does come down from Oriole. Gets Boo back. He's in trouble. And it is a 3 for 0 at the moment. Shire Fair should probably be careful because he's committing quite a bit. Three for zero going over to the Vendetta side. Um, if you're if you're the Spooky Boys, what are you trying to do here? I imagine... Okay, so something I noticed in that fight is that Oriole kind of lasted a long time, all right? And then she was getting energy back up rather quickly. If you notice her level one talent, it's... Uh, Searing Light, so when she casts Ray of Heaven, she does damage as well, and some of that damage does go, go towards her energy. She's, she's going really, you know, hyper-offensive Oriole, and she was doing a bit of damage. I'm not sure exactly how much, but it did seem that way. Oh, no, she gets caught right now. Taunt on Oriole, but, and she drops. Now, Gal is in trouble. I think if Spooky Boys can make it to 16, without losing too much, and I, by too much, I mean maybe if they lose all their forts and there won't be much of a way for them to come back, but if they can get to level 16, maybe level 20, they'll be in really good shape in these fights, and I think they'll be able to out-damage and out-sustain uh, Vendetta. All right.
They are able to keep the keep up. Um, didn't lose a keep. I was worried about that. Um, but this game is going all the way to the Vendetta side. Uh, spooky and boys we have, need to figure something out here. We have Pacific Rim here on the siege camp. Monster yep. versus Mech. Did you ever watch the new King Kong Godzilla movie, Parrot? Yeah, I actually watched it last Friday. You like it? Oh, good tongue comes out of the He gets moved back, though. And again, Dahaka is taking some risks that he probably shouldn't take. Felt like he could have yeah, gotten away. 16 in terms of healing is going to be huge for Vendetta as well. I, I imagine Lucio going up the frequency, which will allow him to amp it up a lot more times. You know, blast music in their faces. Oreo is caught out again. Here comes the Crystal Aegis. Barely dodging the Valkyrie. Looks like they want to put the taunt on the Uther. We got the taunt off of Uther. Cassia follows up with a uh, damage from, from uh, Kael'thas. So we are seeing some some Kael'thas value. But yeah, this is uh, looking a little one-sided at the moment. Hopefully the Spooky Boys can figure some things out. Taunt on Dahaka. Big arrow and oh. uh, that just misses. Yeah, it's unfortunate. If that arrow hit, maybe they could have picked off the Cassia, maybe. <clears throat> and level 16, now they have the banner, the grid spell power. So yes, that is another factor that goes into this. They'll have even more healing. And Lucio did go up the frequency. There is just so much pressure in these lanes. Uh... I'm, I'm not sure what the Spooky Boys need to do. I mean, they're down a talent here. Objective's gonna come up fairly soon. It's gonna be a frozen punisher. Gel is out of position and I'm not sure what happened there. Looks like it's, they're gonna turn on Oriole and Oriole is in trouble. Yeah, and something I'm noticing is Uther is frontlining a lot, and Oriole is kind of like ne never really near him, or is rarely near him. And she has a Crystal Aegis that can maybe turn fights around, maybe save Uther. But in, in that fight, she just wasn't there. She wasn't able to do it. And something I would have liked to see is the instead of maybe the isolation from Dahaka, the adaptation, so they could have another big body, not afraid to walk into Team Vendetta and maybe just, you know, annoy them further, give the Spooky Boys um, more, you know, room to position, more time. I I, I feel like uh, Uther needs to be more in the bush because he's he's walking up in Ean, but there's no follow-up on his stunts. Yeah, and instead, they're just turning on him. And yeah. And that's really unfortunate. His team can't really help him. Again, Oriole can react to that with the Crystal Aegis, and then maybe they can turn it around with the Dragon Zero. Um, some kind of synergy that way, but it, we're just not seeing it. Vendetta's going to be able to get this Merc Wave pushing with the objective. Um, it is going to be a Frozen Punisher, so it's going to be... This keeps in trouble. Um, it's going to be a tough defense for the Spooky Boys. Jumps comes out on Uther. Cassia misses her ult to pull back. Taunt comes out on Uther. He is in trouble. Aegis comes Oriole's out on Uther. And he dies immediately after he comes yeah. out. The isolation comes out on Cassia, but they can't really get any value off of that. And Kyohaka is going to get taunted and follow up from the Kel'Thas. And it's a fairly healthy Frozen Punisher. And Probably going to be the end. I would be surprised if this isn't. Sylvanas looks like she's in trouble. Shields are still up for the Spooky Boys. But it does look like this is GG. Yep. Vendetta is going to take this game. And that's unfortunate for the Spooky Boys. Yeah, but, that's, you know, a, that's a 2 0 domination, Ferret. And uh, it was definitely a domination. I was I was rooting for the Spooky Boys in this game, hoping for a game three.
but you know what, Spooky Boys, it's it's not the e- even though maybe um, you didn't win this series, you have what if you have one fan in the world, it's me. <laughs> if you have no fans in the world, then I am no more. Yeah, this this is an interesting um, shot of the of the game here, but uh, definitely a, kind of a one sided seventeen to four uh, in terms of kills. Um, I don't have much to say, but let me see. KDA if I, is just a number. KDA is just a number, but a number that you uh, you care for quite a bit. Let me see <laughs> if I can get a uh, uh, interview. From one of the members of Vendetta, but um, I mean, what what did you see there that you know, we could change? Um, yeah, looking back on it, um, I I I I think I mentioned this. Um, the Haka taking the isolation, I'm not a too too much of a fan of. I would have preferred to see the adaptation and the Haka being more able to play more of a as more of a front line. And um, Brave just, you would think it would have given them the opportunity to annoy the back line, distract them, and then maybe give his team um, a chance or more opportunities to, you know, make a play. Um, yeah. Oriole not being close to the Uther a lot of the time to save him with a Crystal Aegis or make a play with the Crystal Aegis, he held on to it a couple of fights. Nice. Uh, we're going to jump into Lobby 2 of the NGS Discord. Get you there, Ferret. Hey, Legacy. Hey, hey, hey. Congratulations on tonight's victory. It was definitely very clean. Very clean. Uh, what can you tell us about game two? I got to I gotta give a shout out to our Diva player, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just blows my mind how good these guys are and i kept i could not believe they didn't ban diva after that game one well uh unfortunately we were we were unable to catch game one uh my windows decided to crash right before the uh match started so i apologize for that um not knowing what game one happened let's talk about game oh yeah we'll just talk game about two. game two of course let's talk about game two yeah. yeah uh so you have some fans definitely in the uh in the twitch chat um it was a very dominating game, too, to say the least. It looks like every time Uther tried to step up on you or on anybody, uh, you just got turned and taunted and just was melted away. Um, but what was what was the, the discussion and draft about? You know what you were picking versus um, what they were picking and, and what bands were you? Picking? Yeah, yeah. So we were worried about the main tank Uther, and of course they first picked it. Uh, it was it was a calculated risk, and you know just taking the the variant comp against it. Uh, but but let me tell you, these games are a lot closer than they may seem, and there's just a couple little things that could have swung the whole game the entire the the other direction. And yeah. I know we happen to to come out on top this time, but uh, it very easily could have gone another direction, and they they could have had the jump on us and turn a couple fights around, and it's a whole different. It's a whole different situation. So yeah, Dahaka, who is uh, Shirefair is playing Dahaka. He he um, bushed in the bottom lane and just missed a ton on. One yeah, of see that could have. I mean, that happened that, a couple that times. Definitely so could have t- turned the match, and unfortunately, he didn't get the the benefit of getting a pick. But the Diva top was able to get a ton of soak and do pretty good damage to the wall. Um, yeah, I felt like our Diva was really a lot like having the Lost Vikings. I don't know what it is, but she was just everywhere. Yep, and. Did you know? Did a great job, but awesome. you know these. Yeah, this league. It's it's going to be all about the playoffs, and we're going to see who comes out on top. Now, are you a recent addition to the uh, Vendetta side? Because I, I am. Don't, I don't believe I saw you because we played we played Vendetta week one. Um. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we we did a couple trades right before the uh, the roster lock, and I got to tell you. I'm all about a place where I can learn and just continue to grow and get better. Awesome. Cause you know, none, none of us are, none of us are in the pros right now. Right. I so believe we all, this is the amateur, amateur, amateur. Yeah. Division. We, uh, the, we all have a little bit to learn, you know? So yeah. Yeah. 
but well, it's when, just yeah yeah I lo- yeah i love these guys and i i suspect we'll be together a long time so awesome. happy to be here well with that domination it moves you up to 16 points on vendetta uh, obviously the rest of the teams have not um played yet or or, or most of the teams have, yeah, well, haven't played. Well, that's okay. You, you can talk about where we'd be, assuming. No yeah, right now, played. right now you're in first. Right now you're in first place. Woo! Um, All right. Uh, and it looks like at the moment you guys are locked in for the playoffs. Um, but as I as I've mentioned in many casts before, um, the Nexus division is fairly even in terms of skill level. Uh, it so, really is. So I'm not exactly sure if there's an advantage on being uh, the first seed versus the eighth seed. Definitely, no. these teams are really, really good. There's going to be a lot of upsets. It's going to, it's going to be just like uh, the March Madness this season. You know, <laughs> this is this will be the so, uh, the April Madness for for the right. NCAA season. Well, are you a Gonzaga guy or a Baylor guy? You know, I wanted Gonzaga. See, I live in Texas. I live in Dallas, so mm-hmm. of course I'm. I was not upset that Baylor won, representing. But I really wanted that undefeated season. I'm like, come on, guys. But it just they weren't there, you know? It just didn't happen. So next week, you guys play I Just Enjoy Bread Man. Uh, That's going to be tough, yeah. Really strong team. They're real tough. Um, they run interesting comps. I'm sure you guys are working on looking at their, their draft and, and what to ban. Um, but, you know, I'll let you celebrate this week with your 2-0 domination over the Spooky Boogie Boys. Uh, any any shout-outs or anything you want to – let us know what, 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 what's going on with you guys. You know, I'm well aware that the game, you know, used to have a lot more leagues going on. But I tell you, the followers and the fans and, of course, you guys for casting the game, it just – that, to me, is everything. Uh, we're all going to continue to play, but just to have the audience and hopefully we can hit some games together after after the matches and whatnot, I mean, that's – that's what it's all about. And the game is so awesome. Like I have not found a replacement for this game, even though it's not getting as many updates as it used to. And I, it's not the, not that I'm looking right, but it's just, you would think there would be something better, but I just haven't found anything close. You know, uh, the answer so to that, the answer to that question legacy is hello kitty online adventure Island. Uh, okay. I'll check it out. It's pretty good. <laughs> the title, the title is a little misleading. If it's, it's that awesome, the but. title does not give it justice. It's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely a pretty strong, strong game to play. Well, congratulations. Uh, I, w- I want to thank you for letting us cast your match uh, and apologize for letting us cast your match at the same time. But um, again, congrats, that. You congrats, on, your, congrats on your 2 0. Congrats on your 2 0. Hey, how, how about you do a replay next week? You know, I, we'll, I will we'll do a replay on game one. Correct, sir. <laughs> there you go. And you just, just say, hey, this is a random game from a random week. That way I won't give anything away. There we go. All right. Hey, congrats. All right, congrats on tonight. Thanks. Have a good yep, one. Congrats. Bye. Thank you. Ferret, uh, we've done it again. We have lowered yeah. the we have lowered the expectations for all casters in NGS. So uh, But you know what? I, I just wanted to say something. Uh, uh hearing Legacy talk about his passion for the game, you know, not dying and it's still, you know, his number one game. Still a love better love story than Twilight. I just gotta <laughs> say that. All you Twilight fans. If there, if there are uh, any Twilight fans there, I, I'm not sorry. Well, uh, sorry, not sorry is Ferret's motto. Well, c- boys, congratulations. Uh, looking forward to, uh, to to next week to watch you guys play uh, I Just Enjoy Bread, man. Uh, that's us signing off. Ferret, congratulations and good night. Yes. All right. See you guys.